Hi, and welcome to More Human, More Resources, the HR podcast for entrepreneurs. I'm Vicki Brown, your host and CEO of Vidomineo Enterprises. As a serial entrepreneur, I understand that having the right expert help has been critical to my success. That's why I'm dedicated to telling you, in plain language, what's going on in the world of HR that might impact your business and what you need to do about it with real actionable tips to help you master that list of must-dos and grow your leadership muscle. First things first, the information contained in this podcast is provided for general purposes only and is not to be considered legal advice. Your decision to adopt or not adopt any practice or procedure mentioned in this podcast is solely yours and we bear no responsibility for the outcome. We urge you to always consult legal counsel and other appropriate licensed professionals. And with that, let's get into the show. You're listening to Season 4, Episode 5. I thought in this episode we'd do something a bit different. Instead of focusing on one topic, it seemed like a good idea to do a bit of an HR Q&A. So I've gathered some of your cues, and here goes my A's. After one of our former employees left the company, we found out she'd used the company card for hundreds of dollars of personal charges. My CEO is fuming. Recently, the former employee applied to the 401k plan to withdraw her funds so she can roll them over into her new plan. But my CEO won't approve releasing the funds with the 401k carrier. She says, until we get every penny of our money back, she's not approving anything. Is that okay? All right, while I can certainly understand the frustration and even anger, unfortunately, just like you can't hold someone's final pay hostage, you can't hijack their retirement plan money. All 401ks are governed by the Employee Retirement Income Security Act of 1974, or ERISA, and it's a federal law that sets minimum standards for almost all retirement and even some health plans. The primary job of ERISA is to protect individuals that are in the plan. It mandates things like requiring notices to participants about plan features and funding, setting minimum standards for participation, vesting, the responsibilities of the fiduciary. By the way, if you have a retirement plan and don't know who your fiduciary is, it's probably you, and you should really look into that. So, all that to say, ERISA is federal, and it's not getting around. And it also isn't concerned whether or not your former employee owes you money. The two issues are completely separate. One is how the retirement funds are managed, and the other is an issue for the court, either small claims or criminal. So if you're tagged with holding on to someone's retirement account, well, let's just say big trouble is around the corner. Both the IRS and Department of Labor will be really unhappy with you and they will make their unhappiness known in the application of penalties and fines. Honestly, it's just not worth it. So call your attorney, have them write a letter, or even file a police report for theft if you have to. But give Stealing Sally her 401k funds. All right, next cue. My employee came in for his shift, but things were really slow, so we sent him home. We tried to call him while he was on his way, but couldn't reach him. Now, after he got his paycheck, He's complaining that he didn't get paid for that day. How can he expect to be paid for a day he didn't even work? California and eight other states have some form of a reporting time pay requirement. They're all a bit different, but California law says that if the employee ends up not working due to no fault of their own, then they have to be paid. Now, how much they get paid depends. They have to get half of their scheduled shift, but... If half of their shift is less than two hours, well, then they get two hours. And if half their shift is more than four hours, then they get four hours. And the time the employee actually worked counts. So if they were clocked in for 30 minutes, it counts toward the reporting time pay. Now, there are some bells and whistles around how and if this counts as overtime. Generally not. So be sure to check the specific law. But yes, you should go ahead Calculate the reporting time pay you owe to Went Home Wally and pay it to him right away. All right, next cue. I was called into HR recently for a meeting. During the meeting, my HR rep asked me if I have ever had sex with a colleague. Can she do that? 
That information is so private, I don't want to answer. Frankly, it's none of her business. Well, it sounds like HR is trying to understand if there are possibly any inappropriate relationships happening that might impact the workplace. Okay, that's me trying to give this HR rep some cover. No, it's not her business. And no, you do not have to answer. Listen, it's not uncommon for a company to have a policy on intimate relationships in the workplace. And generally, those policies are focused around supervisor-employee relationships, and they're there to require that the company be notified that a relationship exists. It's a way to protect the person who's junior in the relationship from possible sexual harassment or coercion, and also a way to be sure no undue favors or opportunities are granted. After all, if both parties are in the same team, one reporting to the other, the company has to look out for the rest of the team as well. So again, have a policy and have a form so everything is uniform and make sure it's just information that's needed, like when did it start, disclaimers that it's a consenting relationship, etc. But for HR to come right out and ask if you're having or had sex with someone, well, I don't know about you, but I would say, as this is extremely sensitive and private information, I decline to answer that question. I understand the notification requirement on intimate relationships, and I'll be sure to notify you via the appropriate form or memo should the need arise. And then I would leave, honestly. Next cue. I have an employee who is clearly struggling. He's late all the time, has difficulty focusing, forgets things like meetings and client calls, and really just seems dazed some of the time. He used to be a really great employee, but I think he's doing drugs. What should I do? I don't want to just fire him, but this can't continue. All right, this is one of the stickiest situations to approach. The main thing is to stay focused on the performance aspect, because after all, you just think he's doing drugs. All these behaviors could be caused by something completely different. So step carefully. The first thing to do is have a meeting with him to discuss his performance. Make it clear that your expectations are this and his performance is that. And just ask him, is there any reason he can think of that has caused his performance to fall off so dramatically? If he says he has a problem and wants to address it, well, then you're obligated to make space for him to go to rehab. Now, there are lots of caveats with this plan. So if you find yourself here, definitely speak with your attorney. But if he doesn't come forward, then you have to deal with it as a strictly performance-based issue. And that unfortunately means corrective action, warnings, and even possible termination. I know this is not an easy thing to hear or think about, but remember, you have an obligation to the rest of the team as their leader. So buckle up and do the hard thing. If you found this information helpful, please leave a review and tell a friend. Thanks for spending the time. Until next week, same time, same place.